In this episode of Rapid Media TV, we travel to Frontenac Provincial Park to learn what makes this semi-wilderness area a great place to paddle. We talk to Mark Hall from Delta Kayaks about their best-selling boat and why they are making waves in the industry. And in our tech tip, we show you how to make sure you get your boat safely to and from the water. This is Rapid Media TV. Rapid Media presents Rapid Media TV. Learn more about Rapid Media's print and digital magazines, International Paddling Film Festival, on water events, and online store. Visit rapidmedia.com. This episode of Rapid Media TV is brought to you in part by. Wednesday morning here at the Rapid Media office and we just got a call from Mark Hall at Delta Kayaks. He's on his cross-country dealer tour and he said he'd meet us down at Frontenac Outfitters. So we loaded up the truck and we're headed down for this episode of Rapid Media TV. I'm here in Frontenac Provincial Park, just out in front of their interpretive center with P the superintendent, Peter Dawson. Peter, this I know that you run great kids programs here at the park, and I, uh, I know there's some hiking trails and things, but that's not what makes this park so unique. It, it's location, it seems to me. Quite right, Scott. We've got our programs for, for all ages, really, here, but it's uh, the southernmost backcountry park in Ontario. And so what people can come here and enjoy, whether they come for the day, or they come for a uh, more extended overnight trip, hiking or paddling. Uh, we've got it a nice little area here in uh, Southern Ontario and nice, easy access from Kingston, Toronto, Ottawa areas. I, was, I had a chance to do a hike this morning with one of your summer students, Eric, and, and he said he referred to it as a perfect jump off spot for young families. Th that's originally how it was set up. Uh, back in the uh, mid 70s as, a, as an introductory park to, to backcountry camping and but it's growing well it still serves that purpose for some is there's so many people that will come here because of its ease of access because it offers backcountry come here for a shorter trip and then if they want to do a longer trip well yes they, they head a little further north we did a little hike here this afternoon or yesterday afternoon and we saw more animals in the first hundred yards than I do on some week-long canoe trips is this area unique in that way it's, it's a really interesting area that way, Scott, because uh, it, it's a meeting of, uh, of a lot of uh, equal regions. And being in southern Ontario, but it's got some of the, the northern influence, the, uh, being on Canadian Shield, and then the, the, the southern influence from the, the limestone just south of us and that. So we get a diversity of species here, plants and animals, uh, that make it just a, a really interesting spot that attracts a lot of people, whether it be people studying, you know, butterflies to uh, reptiles to uh, ferns, you name it. Peter, we're specifically here, we're, we're here for the paddling, but the, give, me, give me an example of what, um, you know, what you could do here in a canoe or kayak trip. Well, we've got outfitters close by. And so coming into the park, there's uh, certainly day, uh, day visit opportunities, uh, but with the overnight opportunities, you can come in. We've got a, a, a series of uh, lakes, 22 lakes, many of them uh, connected with portages, some portages ranging up to a kilometer. Um, and then there's the perimeter of the park and paddle routes around it that, that can start and end with the park using park campsites. So we've got quite a variety for people to experience here. Great, and this is a completely, it's an inside the park, it's a no motor zone, so it's truly a wilderness experience. Yeah, we think of it as maybe semi-wilderness, but, but definitely right, a no motor zone. Um, and uh, so there's quiet in the park. Boundary Lakes do have some motors, but again, they're not overly busy and people can still enjoy and then on the park side and portage into the park from there. Great. Well, I know you have a very busy weekend coming up on the long weekend, so I'm going like to let you get back to superintending and we're going to go for a paddle in your park. Sounds good. Thanks thank very much. Thank you very much.
I'm here on the fringe of Front Neck Park with uh, Mark Hall at Delta Cox. Mark, you're the sales design and marketing manager there. And we got a chance to paddle yesterday, and you didn't put me in an 18-foot boat. We paddled a 12 and a 14-footer. Um, this is a whole new category of boat. 10 years ago, a 12-foot boat would have been a wreck boat, but these aren't wreck boats. This is a whole new category, and your top seller. Uh, tell, me what, tell me about this. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, with the amount of dry storage we put in the boats now and the full volume, uh, creates a bit of a controversial situation where we can now paddle in the park for three, four, five days with short 12 and a half or, you know, 14 and a half foot boats. So how, is, how, how are you as a designer at Delta making these boats able to do that? Uh, volume, you know, throughout the bow to stern, uh, you know, prime example with our 14.5, you can actually put the whole tent in the bow versus, uh, you know, tent pegs in a majority of other boats. Right. Mark, this isn't a wreck boat. It paddles well, it's outfitted as well, it's rigged well, uh, it's fun to paddle like a composite boat, but it's not composite, it's thermoform. What are the advantages of, of a thermoform boat? Yeah, well, you know, a thermoform boat basically gives you the fiberglass performance at, you know, a thousand or more dollars less. And uh, the ease of uh, repairability, it's easier to repair a thermoform boat than any other boat out there, really. That's, that's funny you should mention that. When I, I Facebooked that we were coming down here to meet up with you and do some paddling, and the first post um, was, ask them how you fix these things. So yeah. how, do, how do you fix a thermoform boat? Yeah, exactly. Well, if you, if you think of uh, fiberglass cloth is your general repair for composite boats, so all we're doing is cutting a patch of fiberglass cloth three times the size of, well, three times uh, to layer, uh, a three layer interior band-aid, I guess you could say, uh, mixed with our adhesive. And you simply pick up that patch, put it on the inside of the boat. No preparation required, just simply dry it and put the patch on. And, uh, you know, two hours later, you're good to go again. Mark, one of the big things I noticed when I was out there paddling was how well, uh, how well the cockpit fit. And mm -hmm. you know, I was doing some rollings and the thigh braces, and it seemed just to work. How do you, how did you accomplish that at Delta? Uh, probably our, our biggest selling point of all the boats, um, among a few things, but uh, the seat, uh, the movement of the seat forward and backwards, allows you to really give, you know, change the complexion of the uh, bracing for the thigh braces, so you can move your seat forward and backwards, you know, up to four inches. And of course, um, the, you know, the position of your legs underneath the uh, deck of the cockpit allows you to, you know, firm yourself in pretty good for rolls, et cetera. And, um, and on top of that, we've just uh, brought out a fit kit, which is an eight inch molded part that fits on the side of the seat with three foam blocks that attach to that as well. So for, you know, slender is going into the cockpit. <laughs> Such as me. Exactly, just a <laughs> wonderful situation. <laughs> Well, Mark, I know you're in the middle of a dealer tour and you're off to New Hampshire after this, so thank you very much for taking the time and taking me paddling. Good time, thanks. All right. <laughs>
This is a backup plan for me. This is in case, for whatever reason, my straps came off from the boat to the rack, or, and it's happened to me in the past, the racks themselves have come off the truck. Tying your boat down is as easy as that. Make sure the racks are secure to the vehicle. Get the boat up on. If you're not using cradles, get it up on its side. Secure it to the racks and set yourself up with a backup system. But remember, the best system for tying your boat down is the one that gets you from where you are to where you're going. Rapid Media TV. Learn more about Rapid Media's print and digital magazines, International Paddling Film Festival, on-water events, and online store. Visit rapidmedia.com.